You know, there's a popular movement in Christendom, meaning the church and Christianity as a whole, that says that if you name it and claim it, you get it. <laughs> if it works, I guess they, they play with it. God works with them according to his choice. There's other people that say if you profess it, confess it, and obsess it, then you have it. Well, I don't know about that, you know, but if it works for them, maybe, maybe they do. But, you know, somewhere in between the two, I find a truth that I see more real than what obsesses or professes or confess it or claim it and name it and chain it and whatever do. And both of these don't seem to have quite the power of the conviction of reading in Scripture what God does. And it's said that God's Word goes into us and that it will not return void back to God except that it accomplish the work that He set it forth to do. So, if God's Word is powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, you know, able to cut asunder the spirit from the flesh and or the yeah the spirit from the flesh and the flesh from the spirit and to divide and to show forth the intense and the reality of what's going on inside our hearts then i think you might want to put the word of god in you and let it accomplish its purpose because you see god's word in you will cause you to think about what god said now when you wake up in the morning it's your choice. You could slip on a channel changer and turn on the news and let that kind of news come inside you and affect you. And then your day may be directed by whatever the news says. If the news says some good news, maybe you're going to have a good day. <laughs> if it's full of everything's going wrong, don't you think it might affect you? Same thing is true about, you know, if you are a confess, profess, and obsess with, then do you have to always wake up every day and obsess, profess, and confess? Wow, it seems like a lot of work. Or when you name it, claim it, and shame it, or, you know, blame it, or whatever you do, do you have to claim it every day in order to get it? Hmm. You know, God's news, to me, is simply, He wants to tell me what's going to happen today in my day. He wants to prepare me for my day, to walk with me in the way, and to show me how I should go, which way I should go. So, my God news is my good news, and it affects the way I feel, rather than me making me feel the way I think I should. So, I don't know about other people, you know, I think that bitter people will talk about bitterness, and then they promote bitterness, and then all they seem to ever say is bitter. People that are critical seem to always talk about criticism, and they're always criticizing everything around them. People that talk about Jesus are usually looking for Jesus, and if they have Jesus, then they're usually talking about the person they know. One scripture we know of, it says that, I think it was Nathaniel that ran to his brother and said, hey, look, I found Jesus. Or, no, it wasn't Nathaniel. But it was one of the disciples and said, I found Jesus, come and see. He told me everything about me. So when you listen to yourself and what's coming out of your mouth and what you're talking about, maybe it's because of what you're putting in your head that's making you either alive unto God or dead to maybe responding to what God wants for you. Each day in your day, choose something a little bit more positive than just doing, infusing, or somehow being something that you're not. But allow God to change you by His way, and I think you'll find that your day will go a lot smoother and easier than maybe putting on the news, finding out what the traffic report is, hearing, you know, on your iPads, you know, just nothing but worship, worship, worship. Because, you see, this guy's got his iPads on. 
okay, maybe they're not iPads. Maybe they were Walkmans at his day. And he's like, but you know, it isn't always joy joy. Sometimes it's peace. Sometimes it's love. Sometimes it's weeping. And sometimes it's sorrow. Because God wants you to have a complete life. A fulfilled life. A life that is humble, such as we are, and tender, which is only made in one way. And that's by sympathizing with another person who's going through it. Not because you're joyful all the time, but because you can feel what they feel because you've experienced it yourself. Just like Jesus said, he experienced the same things that we've gone through. And then he comforted us. And he knew how much we had gone through it, so he gave us the comforter. In streams in the desert, blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, who passing through the valley of weeping, make it a well. Comfort does not come to the lighthearted and merry. We must go down into the depths if we would experience this most precious of God's gifts. Comfort and thus be prepared to be co-workers together with him. When night, needful night, gathers over the garden of our souls, when the leaves close up and the flowers no longer hold any sunlight within their folded petals, there shall never be wanting, even in the thickest darkness. Drops of heavenly dew, dew which falls only when the sun has gone. In every season of our soul, there is a completeness that God makes whole. There is the allowance for us to have pain. There is that plan of God to incorporate suffering in our lives. There is that spiritual function that God says, I will not heal in some place in time, for it accomplishes more by my grace being sufficient than it does by your healing and response to it. Oftentimes we confuse the consequences of our own actions with the intent of God and so blame him for much of what is not his fault but our own but there is also a place and a time for going through some of the most ag agonizing and miserable feelings that you'll ever experience and one of the reasons it's not the only reason but one of the reasons you'll go through it is because of the comfort that you were comforted with that you learned in your times of sorrow you'll be able to help and comfort someone else i hope you discover like i have that in all of those times you learn from them not just be brought down by them but that you can have jesus in them so that you'll know what to do through them because it's meant for your learning to help someone else who might cry out desperately for hope and the only hope they have is you so what comes out of your mouth whether bitter profession confession name it claim it i hope it's the word of god and i hope it's jesus in you sharing because people don't need some dead religion they need a living god to touch them where they are as they are today and God just might be using you right now to be the one that he wants to speak to someone else that's next door to you or standing right in front of you. I hope so. Because you'll find that naming it and claiming it, professing it and confessing it just doesn't cut it. But Jesus alive in you, that is the hope of glory. And it'll also be someone seeing that Jesus is real, and so is your faith.